Professor Kix's Orlax cleared his throat, or whatever passed for a throat in his gelatinous, seven-tentacled body. The classroom of eager young Zorbonians fell silent, their eye stalks swivelling in unison to focus on their esteemed xenobiology instructor. All right, you squirming mass of protoplasm, Kix's Orlax began, his voice a mixture of exasperation and amusement. Today we're going to dive into the fascinating and utterly terrifying world of Earth's microscopic killers. Strap in, kids. It's going to be a wild ride. The students chittered excitedly, their translucent bodies pulsating with anticipation. Earth, that mysterious blue marble in the cosmos, had long been a subject of both fascination and horror for the galactic community. Its inhabitants, those bizarre, bipedal creatures called humans, were renowned across the stars for their resilience, adaptability, and sheer dumb luck in surviving on a planet that seemed designed to kill them at every turn. Now, Kix's Orlax continued, his tentacles waving dramatically, who can tell me why Earth is classified as a Class 13 death world? A brave student named Blorp raised a quivering appendage. Because... Because everything there wants to kill you. The class erupted in nervous laughter. A sound not unlike a thousand jellies being shaken simultaneously. Ha! Huh. Well, you're not entirely wrong, Blorp. Kick Zorlax chuckled, his gelatinous form rippling with mirth. But it's a bit more complicated than that. Earth is a Class 13 death world because of its biodiversity. The sheer number of species, both macro and microscopic, that have evolved to be deadly is, well, it's mind-boggling. The professor activated the holographic display at the centre of the classroom. A three-dimensional image of Earth appeared slowly rotating. Today we're going to focus on Earth's tiniest terrors, bacteria and viruses. Kix's Orlax's voice took on a theatrical whisper. The invisible killers that lurk in every corner of that watery rock. The image zoomed in, displaying a colourful array of microorganisms. The students recoiled in horror their bodies instinctively shrinking away from the hologram. Oh, come now, Kix Orlax teased. They can't hurt you from here. Probably. A collective shudder ran through the classroom. Let's start with something relatively harmless, shall we? Behold, the common cold virus. The hologram shifted to display a spiky spherical object. Now you might think, oh, that doesn't look so bad, Kix's Orlax said, mimicking a high-pitched voice that sounded disturbingly like a squeeze toy being manhandled. But let me tell you, this little bugger has been the bane of human existence for millennia. It mutates faster than a Quaxian shapeshifter on a bender, making it nearly impossible to cure. The students murmured in a mixture of awe and disgust. But wait, there's more. Kix Zorlax exclaimed, his tentacles flailing with excitement. Let's move on to something a bit more lethal. The hologram changed again, this time showing a rod-shaped bacterium. This, my dear students, is Yersinia pestis, better known as the cause of the Black Death. This charming little fellow wiped out nearly half of Europe's population in the 14th century. Can you imagine? Half a continent gone because of something you can't even see without a microscope. The classroom fell silent, the horror of the concept sinking in. But here's the kicker, Kix's Orlax continued, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. Humans survived. Not only did they survive, but they thrived. They bounced back from near-extinction events caused by microscopic assassins, not once, not twice, but countless times throughout their history. A student named Gloopy hesitantly raised a pseudopod. But, but, Professor, how, how did they survive? 
Kix's Orlax's body quivered with what passed for a smile in his species. Ah, Gloopy, that's the million credit question, isn't it? The answer, as far as we can tell, is a combination of factors. Their immune systems are like intergalactic war machines, constantly adapting and evolving. Their scientists are relentless in their pursuit of cures and preventions. And perhaps most importantly, humans are just too damn stubborn to die. The class burst into nervous laughter again, the tension in the room palpable. Now let's talk about something truly terrifying, Kix's Orlac said, his voice taking on a sombre tone. Prions. The hologram shifted once more, displaying a misfolded protein. These, my dear students, are perhaps the most insidious killers on earth. They're not even alive in the traditional sense. They're just proteins that have gone rogue, convincing other proteins to misfold and causing devastating neurological diseases. The students' eye stalks widened in horror. And the worst part? They're nearly indestructible. You can boil them, irradiate them, douse them in chemicals, and they'll just keep on trucking. It's like trying to reason with a Vogon about poetry, utterly futile and likely to end in madness. Kixorlax paused, letting the information sink in. The classroom was so quiet you could hear a pseudopod drop. But here's the thing, he continued, his voice filled with a mix of awe and disbelief. Humans? They're fascinated by these killers. They study them, they try to understand them, and in many cases they found ways to fight back. The professor's form rippled with excitement. Which brings us to the most mind-boggling part of all this. Humans have taken these microscopic murderers and turned them into tools. They've harnessed bacteria to create medicines, used viruses to deliver gene therapies, and even explored using prions for data storage. The class erupted in a cacophony of disbelieving squeaks and squishes. I know, I know, Kixazorlax said, waving his tentacles to quiet the class. It sounds insane. But that's humans for you. They look at something that could kill them in seconds and think, hmm, how can I use this to my advantage? A student named Zlurp hesitantly raised an appendage. Professor, are... are humans insane? Kixazorlax let out a sound that was half laugh, half gurgle. Insane? Oh, Zlurp, that doesn't even begin to cover it. Humans are a species that evolved on a planet where literally everything, down to the microscopic level, is trying to kill them. And instead of cowering in fear or trying to escape, they decided to dig in their heels and say, Bring it on! The professor's form rippled with what could only be described as admiration. They're not just survivors, they're conquerors. They've taken every challenge their death world has thrown at them and turned it into an opportunity. It's, well, it's both terrifying and awe-inspiring. The classroom was silent, each student lost in thought about the implications of what they'd learned. Now, Kixazorlax said, his voice taking on a mischievous tone, who wants to hear about the time a human diplomat accidentally introduced the common cold to the Andromeda Council? The students' eye stalks perked up with interest. Picture this, the professor began, his tentacles gesticulating wildly. It's the grand opening of the new intergalactic embassy on Earth. Dignitaries from across the known universe are gathered to celebrate this momentous occasion. The human ambassador, a charming fellow named Johnson, steps up to the podium to deliver his welcome speech. Kixazorlax paused for dramatic effect, his gelatinous body quivering with barely contained laughter. And then... he sneezes... The class gasped in unison. Now, you have to understand, Kixazorlax continued, most species in the galaxy have never encountered anything like a human sneeze. It's explosive, it's violent, and it sends a spray of potentially virus-laden droplets 
hurtling through the air at speeds approaching that of a small spacecraft. The students' bodies rippled with a mixture of horror and fascination. The Andromeda delegation, being the closest to the podium, got the full brunt of it. Their delicate sensory tendrils were instantly coated in a fine mist of human, let's call it, essence. A collective shudder ran through the classroom. Within hours, the entire Andromedan contingent was experiencing symptoms they'd never encountered before. Swelling of their gas exchange sacs, uncontrollable secretion of mucus-like substances, and violent expulsions of air from their own respiratory orifices. Kix's Zorlax's voice took on a tone of mock seriousness. It was, in diplomatic terms, a complete and utter clusterfuck. The class erupted in nervous giggles, not quite sure if they should be laughing at such a potentially dire situation. The humans, to their credit, were mortified, the professor continued. They immediately quarantined the affected delegates and set their best scientists to work on understanding how a simple cold virus could affect a species from another galaxy. Kix's Orlax's tentacles waved in a gesture that approximated a shrug. Turns out, the common cold virus is a lot more adaptable than anyone had given it credit for. It had managed to latch onto the Andromedan physiology and cause havoc in record time. A student named Blip cautiously raised an appendage. But, but Professor, wouldn't that be considered an act of biological warfare? Kix's Orlax let out a sound that was half chuckle, half gurgle. Oh, Blip, you sweet summer child. In any other circumstance or with any other species, absolutely. It would have been grounds for immediate sanctions, if not outright war. The Professor's form rippled with amusement. But this is humanity we're talking about. Do you know what they did instead? The class leaned forward in anticipation, their eye stalks quivering. They apologised profusely, of course. But then, in true human fashion, they turned the entire fiasco into a learning opportunity. Within weeks, they had developed a cross-species vaccine for the common cold something their scientists had been trying to achieve for centuries for their own species alone. Kix's Orlax's voice took on a tone of grudging admiration. They took a diplomatic nightmare and turned it into one of the greatest medical breakthroughs in galactic history. The Andromedans, once they recovered, were so impressed that they fast-tracked Earth's application to the Galactic Council. The classroom buzzed with excitement and disbelief. And that, my dear students, Kix's Zorlax concluded, his tentacles spread wide, is the perfect encapsulation of humanity's relationship with the microscopic world. They live on a planet teeming with invisible killers, and instead of succumbing, they adapt, they innovate, they turn potential extinction events into stepping stones for advancement. The professor's form seemed to swell with enthusiasm. It's why, despite being one of the most physically fragile species we've encountered, humans are considered one of the most formidable races in the galaxy. They've been forged in the crucible of a world that wants them dead, and they've emerged not just alive, but thriving. A contemplative silence fell over the classroom as the students digested this information. Now, Kix's Orlax said, his voice taking on a mischievous tone once more, who wants to hear about the time a human scientist accidentally created a bacteria that turns plastic into edible protein? The class erupted in excited chittering, their earlier fear forgotten in the face of their fascination with humanity's bizarre and wonderful relationship with the microscopic world. As Kix's Orlax launched into another tale of human ingenuity and recklessness, he couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder. These strange, fragile, yet incredibly resilient beings never ceased to amaze him. Living on a planet where death lurked around every corner, in every drop of water, in every breath of air, humans had not just survived but had turned their world's deadliest inhabitants into tools for their own advancement. It was terrifying. It was 
awe-inspiring. It was, in a word, human. And as he regaled his students with more tales of humanity's triumphs and near misses in the realm of the microscopic, Kix's Zorlax couldn't shake the feeling that the galaxy had better watch out. Because if humans could turn their planet's tiniest killers into allies, there was no telling what they might accomplish next. The universe, it seemed, was in for one hell of a ride. Meanwhile, light years away on Earth. Dr. Samantha Chen sneezed violently, nearly dropping the Petri dish she was holding. Her lab partner, Dr. Rajesh Patel, looked up from his microscope with a mixture of concern and amusement. Caught the lab bug again, Sam? Rajesh teased, sliding a box of tissues across the sterile workbench. Samantha rolled her eyes as she accepted a tissue. Ha ha, very funny. You know as well as I do that we're working with non-pathogenic strains. She paused, a mischievous glint in her eye. Besides, after that fiasco with the Andromedan delegation, I've made it my personal mission to never sneeze in public again. Rajesh chuckled, shaking his head. I still can't believe that happened. Who would have thought a simple cold could cause an interstellar incident? Well, that's the beauty of microbiology, isn't it? Samantha said, her enthusiasm evident despite her stuffy nose. These tiny organisms are full of surprises. Just when you think you've got them figured out, they throw you for a loop. She turned back to her work, carefully examining the culture in the petri dish. Speaking of surprises, have you seen the latest results from our plastic-eating bacteria experiment? Rajesh's eyes widened. No. What's happened? Samantha grinned, her earlier discomfort forgotten in the face of scientific excitement. Well, it seems our little friends have developed a taste for more than just polyethylene. They've started breaking down polypropylene as well. That's... that's incredible, Rajesh exclaimed, rushing over to look at Samantha's data. If we can refine this, we could potentially solve two major environmental issues at once. Samantha nodded, her eyes gleaming with the thrill of discovery. Exactly. We could clean up plastic waste and produce a sustainable protein source. It's like killing two birds with one stone, except in this case we're feeding two birds with one scone. Rajesh groaned at the pun but couldn't suppress his smile. You know, sometimes I think our alien friends are right to be a little afraid of us. We take these microscopic terrors and turn them into solutions for our biggest problems. Well, what choice do we have? Samantha shrugged turning back to her work. We live on a planet that's been trying to kill us since day one. We've had to get creative to survive. She paused, a thoughtful expression crossing her face. You know, I wonder what the galactic community would think if they knew about our latest project. Rajesh raised an eyebrow. You mean the one where we're trying to use modified prions as data storage devices? I'm pretty sure they'd think we've lost our minds. Samantha laughed, the sound echoing through the lab. Probably. But that's what makes humanity special, isn't it? We look at something that could kill us in seconds and think, how can we use this to our advantage? You're right, Rajesh nodded, a proud smile on his face. It's that very mindset that's gotten us this far. Who knows where it'll take us next? Samantha was about to reply when her computer chimed, signalling an incoming video call. She glanced at the screen and her eyes widened. It's the Galactic Council. Quick, look professional. Rajesh scrambled to straighten his lab coat as Samantha accepted the call. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing the imposing figure of Xanthor, the Galactic Council's chief science officer. Greetings, Dr. Chen, Dr. Patel. Xanthor's gravelly voice filled the lab. The alien's crystalline body shimmered with an inner light, its faceted eyes fixed on the two human scientists. I trust I'm not interrupting anything explosive. 
Samantha chuckled nervously. No explosions today, Chief Xanthor. Just your run-of-the-mill bacteria wrangling. What can we do for you? Xanthor's crystalline form pulsed with what might have been amusement. Ah, yes. Run-of-the-mill for humans often translates to utterly terrifying for the rest of the galaxy. But that's precisely why I'm calling. The alien's voice took on a more serious tone. We've received reports of a new pathogen emerging on Zorbon Prime. It's affecting their central nervous systems in ways we've never seen before. Given humanity's unique perspective on microbial threats, we were hoping you might lend your expertise. Samantha and Rajesh exchanged excited glances. This was big. The Galactic Council rarely asked for help especially when it came to biological matters. Earth's reputation as a death world usually meant other species preferred to keep their distance. We'd be honoured to help, Samantha said, her voice steady despite her racing pulse. Can you send us the data you have so far? Xanthor nodded, its crystalline body chiming softly with the movement. It's already on its way. I must warn you, this pathogen is unlike anything we've encountered. It seems to be evolving at an alarming rate. Rajesh leaned forward, his scientific curiosity piqued. Evolving? How so? It appears to be adapting to every treatment we throw at it, Xanthor explained, a note of frustration in its voice. Almost as if it's learning. Samantha felt a chill run down her spine, a learning pathogen. That was new, even for Earth's standards. But instead of fear, she felt a familiar thrill of excitement. This was exactly the kind of challenge she lived for. We'll get right on it, she assured Xanthor. We'll need to run some simulations, of course, but I think we might have a few tricks up our sleeves that this bug hasn't seen before. Xanthor's crystalline body pulsed with relief. Thank you, doctors. The Zorbo. Neans will be most grateful. And, off the record, I'm glad we have you humans on our side. Your ability to face these microscopic horrors with such enthusiasm is both terrifying and reassuring. As the call ended, Samantha turned to Rajesh, her eyes gleaming with determination. Well, partner, looks like we've got our work cut out for us. Shall we show this alien bug what Earth-grown science can do? Rajesh grinned, already rolling up his sleeves. Let's do it. After all, what's one more deadly pathogen when you grow up on a planet where even the air can kill you? As they dove into their work, neither of them noticed the small group of wide-eyed Zorbonian exchange students watching from the lab's observation deck. The young aliens huddled together, their tentacles intertwined in a mixture of fear and awe. By the great gas giants, one of them whispered. Did you see that? They're... they're excited about facing a deadly pathogen. Another student nodded, its eye stalks quivering. I heard that on Earth they have entire museums dedicated to diseases that nearly wiped them out. They celebrate their survival. And now they're going to save our world, a third student added, its voice filled with wonder. Maybe, maybe we've been looking at Earth all wrong. Maybe being a death world isn't a weakness. Maybe it's their greatest strength. As they watched the human scientists work, their movements quick and sure despite the potential danger, the Zorbonian students felt a shift in their perception. Earth was still a terrifying place, true, but its inhabitants? They were something else, entirely. Back in Professor Kixizorlax's classroom, the excitement was palpable. The news of Earth's involvement in the Zorbonian crisis had spread quickly, and the students were buzzing with questions. Professor! 
Blorp called out, his gelatinous form quivering with excitement. Is it true that the humans are going to save Zorbon Prime? How can they help when our best scientists couldn't? Kix's Orlax's tentacles waved in a gesture that approximated a smile. Ah, Blorp, that's the beauty of human ingenuity. You see, while most species in the galaxy view microscopic organisms as threats to be avoided, humans see them as challenges to be overcome, and sometimes even as potential tools. The professor activated the holographic display once more, this time showing images of various human scientific achievements. Take this, for example, he said, pointing to an image of a sleek, pill-shaped robot. This is a nanobot developed by human scientists. It's designed to mimic harmful bacteria, but instead of causing disease, it delivers targeted medications. The class let out a collective gasp of awe. And this, Kixorlax continued, shifting the display to show a complex molecule, is a synthetic protein created by humans. It's designed to fold in ways that can trap and neutralize prions, those terrifying misfolded proteins we discussed earlier. Slurp raised a tentacle hesitantly. But Professor, isn't that dangerous? Playing with the very things that could kill them? Kix's Orlax let out a sound that was half laugh, half gurgle. Oh, Slurp, you've just summed up the entire history of human scientific advancement. Dangerous, absolutely, but that's never stopped them before. The professor's form rippled with excitement as he continued. You have to understand, for humans, danger isn't just a deterrent, it's a motivator. The deadlier the threat, the more determined they become to understand it, to master it, and ultimately, to turn it to their advantage. He gestured to the holographic display, which now showed a montage of human. S. Working in labs, exploring harsh environments, and venturing into space. This is why humans are so valuable to the galactic community, Chixa Zorlax explained. They've spent their entire evolutionary history adapting to a world that seems designed to kill them. They've faced extinction-level events, pandemic diseases and environmental catastrophes, and each time they've come back stronger. The classroom was silent, each student hanging on the professor's every word. So yes, Kixorlax concluded, his voice filled with a mixture of awe and amusement. The humans are going to try to save Zorban Prime, and based on their track record, I wouldn't bet against them. They'll probably end up creating some miraculous new technology in the process too. As if on cue, the holographic display flickered, showing a breaking news alert from the galactic infonet. Human scientists develop revolutionary treatment for Zorbonian pathogen, the headline blared. Kix's Orlax's tentacles waved excitedly as he read the article aloud to the class. Using a combination of Earth-based extremophile bacteria and synthetic nanoparticles, human scientists have created a treatment that not only neutralizes the Zorbonian pathogen, but also strengthens the affected nervous systems against future attacks. The classroom erupted in a cacophony of excited squeaks and squishes. Unbelievable! Kixorlax muttered, his voice a mixture of admiration and disbelief. They did it again! They took one of the deadliest pathogens in the galaxy and turned it into a medical breakthrough! He turned back to his students, his gelatinous form practically vibrating with enthusiasm. And that, my dear pupils, is why we study humanity. They are living proof that even on a world teeming with microscopic killers, life finds a way. More than that, life thrives, adapts, and ultimately conquers. As the excited chatter of his students filled the room, Kixorlax couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation. If this was what humans could do with the tiniest terrors their world had to offer, what might they achieve next? The galaxy, it seemed, was in for many more surprises, and for once, Chick Zorlax found himself looking forward to them. 
After all, in a universe full of wonders and horrors, who better to lead the way than the species that had turned their own planet's deadliest inhabitants into their greatest allies? As he prepared to dive into the next lesson, Kix Zorlax made a mental note to update the curriculum. Clearly, when it came to humanity, the learning was never truly finished. And somehow, that was the most exciting lesson of all.